to the RQYS online training program, Race Management for On-Water Volunteers. This is session two and the focus is on the timekeeper. Now what we're going to cover is essentially the roles and duties and there's a lot of them for the timekeeper and talk along the way about the, the race documents that have useful information for the timekeeper in that. So there's a number of roles on the start keeper, one of which is on the start boat, one of which is the timekeeper. The timekeeper really needs to be someone who can stay focused when there's hell breaking loose around them and they essentially control the sequence. Now there's the person making the sound signals and that may well be the timekeeper, maybe another person depending on the layout of the boat and the number of people available on that boat. There's usually a separate person putting flags up and down, making the visual signals, and there's a coordination between the timekeeper, the person making the sounds, the sound signaler, and the visual signaler. And they work very closely to actually through that whole start sequence. Then there's a recorder who works more closely with the race officer, and they're recording essentially primarily the, the identification of the boats that are on course side, OCS, they're premature starters, um, and UFD, you flag disqualified, or BFD, black flag disqualified, and for OCS boats, whether they've returned or not. They're responsible for, for counting the number of starters and relaying that information to the other course boats and particularly the finish boat if there is a separate finish boat. And that way these boats know, or the, the, the other mark boats know, how many boats, sailors to expect, how many sailing people are going to be sailing around their mark. It's a bit of a safety issue. So the sequence that we have normally is a 10 minute sequence. Essentially the orange flag usually goes up at least five minutes before the warning signal and then the start sequence proper is from the five minute gun. We used to have guns. Five minute to go the class flag or whichever flag is described in the sailing instructions as the warning signal that is displayed. Goes up with one sound. At four minutes to the start Depending on which preparatory signal the race officer has decided to use, that flag goes up with one sound. And then one minute to go, the preparatory signal is removed. Traditionally, we have a slightly longer signal when a flag comes down than when it goes up. And when the preparatory signal comes down, there's one minute to the start. Then at the start, the class flag's removed. That warning signal is pulled down and that's essentially the starting signal. Now in this process the timekeeper is really a critical essential member of the team. They control that whole sequence. They have to have a clear understanding of that start process. They need to be really quite single-minded. They have to be very focused in their concentration and have a good clear loud voice because everybody on that start boat needs to hear and understand what stage of the sequence we're at. They essentially have a countdown to that deadline, that start. All the watches on the start boat and all the course boats should all be synchronised to the same time, to GPS time. So before we even get into the whole start sequence, the timekeeper's job begins. They are alerting everybody to how long it is to that first signal. And then once we're in the sequence, in the minute before the next signal, they're conveying to all of the starting team what the signal is and what's going to happen. So it's something like one minute to warning signal and one sound. Then 30 seconds to warning signal and one sound. 15 seconds, and then a countdown from 10 to 1 to go. Not uncommonly, this uh, countdown is conveyed on the radio so that the pin boat is in sequence, if you like, or understands what part of the sequence um, the start boat is in, and they can do their job in terms of... Um, communicating and, and conveying to the race officer any OCS boats at their end. 
Also, it's, if you call this over the radio, all the rest of the, the course boats understand that you're in a sequence and understand to limit their radio transmissions unless they're urgent. And it enables them to understand exactly what's going on um, on the start boat. This is one example of a form that the timekeeper might use. There's a number of different ones and there's, you know, some people like this one, people prefer others. Doesn't matter as long as you've got a record and you know where you are in the sequence. Now just a few things that the timekeeper has to keep in mind. As I've said, they have complete control of the race sequence. They essentially have a close conversation with the race officer and it's the race officer that, that literally instructs um, the timekeeper in terms of whether you know, it's a go or no go or if we're taking any sort of action other than the norm. They need to be able to interpret the information conveyed in the notice of race and the sailing instructions. In the notice of race there's a schedule that indicates how many races we're going to have, what time the first race is going to be and so on. In the sailing instructions there's some key times that are useful for the or essential for the timekeeper to know what time the first warning signal is, what time limits there are in terms of how long the race can take what target times there are, how long we'd like the race to take and the time after which we can't start another race, usually on the last day of a regatta. The sailing instructions also let us know where we're going to be sailing. So are we going out of the heads and turning left, right, north, south? Where is the sailing area? It also describes the class flag, that flag that's going to be used as the warning signal. And occasionally um, there is some variation in that five minute start sequence and that also is conveyed if it's changed in the start sailing instructions and the timekeeper should be aware of that change. Another thing they sometimes are required to do, usually in um, championship races, is to keep a record of the lap timing, so how long it takes the first boat to get to the different marks on the course. This helps us to ensure that the target times are met, helps the race officer to understand whether or not they need to extend or, or decrease the length of a, a leg, or shorten the race even. And it also helps the race officer to keep track of where the boats are on, on the course, which enables them then to make some decisions about what changes, if any, they're going to make. And this is an example of a lap timing sheet. And there's more. The timekeeper really should be familiar with the flags that are to be used so that if you know, they can see the wrong flags about to go up, they can do something about it and have some understanding of the sounds that go with those flags. They need to know obviously which class flags are used for the warning signal for which classes on the course if there's more than one. And they should be aware of the timing involved in the regatta. So not all classes have, in a multi-class regatta, have the same number of races a day, have the same time for starts. All of that sort of stuff is in the sailing instructions. They essentially create a timetable um, with the key points in the sequence. Um, that they then communicate to the flag people and to flag person and to the other crew on board. So they're the glue that binds the whole process together. And they're the, they're the one that, that communicates this to the race officer, keeps the race officer focused. Um, and the flag person. And also keep track of that, that sequence of races with the the flag person. They also um, oversee, I guess, the, the, the course board that's usually displayed in terms of letting people, the sailors, know what course they're sailing and what direction that first mark is. So there's a number of tools that the timekeeper needs to know how to use. One obvious one is a stopwatch. So they need to know how to use a stopwatch, how to synchronise a stopwatch, and um, count up or count down depending on 
um, what type of stopwatch you're using. Sometimes we use automated starting boxes so that automate the whole signal process. You need to understand how they work. Timing sheets, which we displayed, whichever one you use, use it, use it properly, use it well, keep that record. The lap timing tracking sheets, where possible. Sometimes it's not possible, but where possible, obviously we're trying to keep a track of that record. Um, the sound system on a boat, uh, it helps if, if someone other than just the sound person knows how the horn or sound system on a boat works and always have some sort of backup. If you're using um, manual sound signals instead of the boat's sound system, then maybe you need two of these because they don't always work. You need a backup. It can be a whistle, it can be anything. Something that makes a sound and people can hear. Then the timekeeper also should have a pretty good idea of how to use a radio because invariably they're the person that is going to be conveying the countdown over the radio to the rest of the, the course boats. They may also need to know how to use a compass. The race officer might need someone to just check a bearing to something or to check that the wind hasn't changed. So helpful that they know how to use one of those. So that's it. Few jobs for the race officer, but thank you.